Well, welcome and congratulations on having this film in the festival. What does it yeah. mean to you to be um, at the Toronto International Film Festival? Uh, well, obviously it's one of the most important festivals in the world. Um, and also it's he people are here very warm with movies, yeah. so it's very, very good to, to see the movie with, with normal audience. It's a, it's a major movie town. People uh, love to see yeah, movies here. Can tell. And this movie is just beautiful. It's like a yeah. sweeping epic. <laughs> and, you know, what inspired you to make this story? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I started to be interested, right after I did the scene inside, I started to be interested in astronomy. Mm -hmm. and, and I started to uh, research uh, from Einstein, Copernicus, Galileo, and, and Hypatia was one of these characters that I had never heard about. Right. And I was so impressed by the fact that um, she was the most important philosopher of the, se of the fifth century in, in Alexandria. And she was a woman, and um, um, she, her life was a whole tragedy at the end, and I, I thought that, that someone should make a movie about her. It surprised me that actually nobody has done it before. Right, and you just stumbled upon this and probably all the research that you were doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you also look into a lot of Egyptian, like in Ale the time of Alexandria and yeah. that kind of research? And yeah, for me it's been a, a total journey of, of yeah. learning. We went to Alexandria, we visited the ruins of the, of the library. And there's nothing, wow. almost nothing left, but you can you can see the Pompey's column. And, and it was, uh, I, I felt uh, thrilled when I thought these people have been here, the pagan priests and the Roman soldiers and Hypatia must have been walking uh, through the stones. So I really felt that I wanted to make this, this travel in time going back to Alexandria. And Rachel? So in Agora, I play Hypatia, who was a, a real-life person. She was um, living in 4th century Alexandria. She, we know that she was a philosopher, an astronomer, a mathematician. She was the daughter of Theon, who ran the library in Alexandria. And um, she was a teacher and a virgin. <laughs> and I think what's interesting about her was that she lived really at the end of a certain period in time where Alexandria was the hub of all intellectual learning on the earth. People came from all corners of the earth to discuss theater and philosophy and maths and astronomy and um, it was a time of incredible learning and a passion for learning. He's absolutely a tragic figure. He's never going to get the things that he wants. And I think it was quite interesting to work out how much his academic interest was related to his feelings of lust and affection and how much of it was genuine. And I didn't ever really answer that question. Max tiene los rasgos perfectos de Fayum y tiene esa profundidad intelectual para interpretar a un esclavo que sabe que es más listo de lo que los demás piensan. It's very difficult for her to see Stretching out below the northwest side of the Acropolis, the ancient Agora was once the heart of Athens. For hundreds of years it was the central seat of politics, administration, commerce, culture and justice. Once residential, from the 6th century onwards the Agora was purely a public area. No one actually lived here. The word Agora originally meant a gathering, meeting or assembly place, and Athenians would gather here to listen to public orations or meet up with each other to discuss the issues of the day. As Athens' importance declined during Roman and Byzantine times, the Agora slowly became a residential area once again. 
and most of its ancient buildings were covered up. Excavations first began here in the 19th century and continue to this day. Around 400 later day buildings have been demolished to this cause. I suppose it must have looked a lot like Placa does today here before digging began. father saw them slaughtered in the circus and fed to the lions. Enough, enough. What? What? I shall now walk across the fire. <laughs> if my God, if my God is the true God, I shall suffer no harm. If, however, your gods exist, they will roast me like a pig. have gathered in the Agora. They are mocking the gods. We must put an end to these insults. They may not fear him, but they will fear our swords. Wait! Wait! Now, what is it you are going to do? Are you going to attack them? Are you going to stain your hands with blood for an insult? To the gods. An insult to the gods. Well, if you think it is so outrageous, then go and denounce their acts before the prefect. One might think that you're protecting them. I am trying to protect our disciples. <laughs> Make way! Make way for the freedom! 
if you, if you don't agree, I won't be able to protect you any longer. I won't be able to have dealings with you, or even greet you. Don't you see? I can't go on without you. How many of you have knives? No. Don't stain your hands with impure blood. Let's stone her. Let's stone this witch. Get some stones. Quickly. The ones we threw are already They are still here. What can you say about the movie Agora? I went to see Agora expecting an epic with swords, sandals, and sex. I found swords and sandals, some unexpected opinions about sex, and a great deal more. This is a movie about ideas, a drama based on the ancient war between science and superstition. All it centers a woman who is in the 4th century after death was a scientist, mathematician, philosopher, astronomer, and teacher. Respected in Egypt, although women were not expected to be any of those things. 
The film titles refers to a name for the public assembly places in ancient Greek city-states. The library was such an agora, and we see Hypatia teaching a class of young men who listened to her with open admiration.